had already five series win for you. Not even it's an uh, person could uh, boast of uh, the one <laughs> It's very kind that you put me in his bracket, but it's, uh, I think I've got some work to do. Uh, I think, obviously, so far, the games that we've played, we've, we've done very well. Um, and what I've really enjoyed about, obviously, coming here to Candy and playing is we've had two excellent surfaces to play on, and we're seeing that the, the batsmen are scoring big runs, and we're learning how to defend on flat wickets. Uh, and I think, I mean, obviously, the scores that the, the individuals have achieved as well has been fantastic to watch, but also the partnerships that those top six uh, have generated for us and I think it's, it's generated some really good exciting cricket as well uh, and obviously the bowlers have had to work hard which is also not a bad thing because it will help us learn to play cricket I mean all around the world and a bit compete all around the world so for me um, I think it's been a so far been a very good experience for us um, and we're seeing some good results which is great. After the World Cup you know, disappointment uh, what have you done to sort of uh, turn things around? From the World Cup, uh, I think what, what we've done is we've flattened the wickets, so we want to try and give the batsmen confidence. Uh, we want them to learn to score big runs and, and put on those big partnerships that I've just talked about. Um, so the more we can do that for them, the better, uh, because ultimately, you know, I mean, nowadays the, the 50 over game they're scoring 300 runs plus regularly, and we have to learn how to do that. But equally, from a bowling attack point of view, we've got to learn how to defend uh, and what disciplines are needed to, de I mean, to defend scores on these good wickets as well. So I think for us, the experience of doing what we're doing now will hold us in good stead moving forward. And we are in that building phase again now. We're building for the next World Cup, uh, and we have to make sure that we put all the building blocks in place so when we do arrive there, uh, we're in a, in a good place. Everybody's got experience under their belt. Everybody knows their roles. And everybody has had success along the way as well, so they carry that confidence with them. One of the areas that we've seen a huge improvement uh, during your tenure is fast bowling. Quite a few guys have come up and uh, come up with matching uh, efforts. How satisfying is that? Oh, really satisfying. So, I mean, I love fast bowling, as you guys know. Uh, and it's, it is a passion of mine. So, for me, it's better just help the youngsters that we've got here uh, to come along. We've seen Dilly and everybody come on. I mean, everybody's improved. Um, so for me, just to, to, to give them my experience, where I took from obviously my past roles, obviously having been a fast bowler myself, it's, it's great to watch them come on. But to be fair, we've got to give the players a lot of credit for this because they're the ones out there doing it. They're the ones that are listening and they're being open-minded enough to try different things. And I think we're seeing the results of that now. So do you know what? It's early days and we've got to keep pushing. But we have the making of a, a very fine young bowling attack for, across all formats if you look at the guys that we've got. Uh, Chris, uh, uh, we saw the last of our and also you just some good bowling partnerships. How do you, how do you uh, uh, inspire them or what could you tell them to keep up that kind of Yeah, I mean, we, we work at some basics. Uh, I mean, after the first game, I thought there was plenty of room for improvement. So we sat with both the, the, the lads down, all of them, not just the bowlers, but the whole team. And we showed them using the Hawkeye dates of what we were talking about, the, the areas that we bowl, the lengths that we bowl, what's successful and what wasn't successful, uh, and talked about how we were going to tighten that up. And they did it beautifully in the last game. Uh, so, and, I mean, other things that we use is first and sixth ball. Can you start your over well and finish your over well? Can you, you know, push the pressure back onto the batsman uh, and make them play the big shot rather than giving them runs either side of the over? And then it's the job of the next ball to pick up where they left off. So you're constantly trying to just drill that pressure onto the batsman. And I think we saw us do that in the last game particularly well. And we saw that with the boundary count coming down. And uh, there are four or five fast bowlers who are playing in and out. And so, uh, out of those four fast bowlers, who will be the guy who is having the capability of uh, getting 30 40 for the team? What, the, the bowlers that can bat as well? Uh, well, I mean, we work very hard with all the bowlers, to be honest, because I, I think gone are the days where you can just have bowlers. They all have to be able to hold the bat and contribute down the, down the order. So, I mean, I think we've seen that. I think at given points we've seen quite a few of the fast bowlers score runs. Um, potentially not as consistency as we'd like, but it's, it's not easy, otherwise they would bat further up the order. So we'll just keep, we push all of them to score runs. Uh, and they're all capable. They're all capable of holding the bat. Well, say, say, out of the fire, someone, one or two, needs to be a 
They all have to be. It's not just one or two, we all have to keep improving. So I'm not going to single anybody out. What I will say is we're going to push all the fast bowlers and spinners to make sure that they're capable of contributing with the ball. Because I think that everybody has to do it at some point. So if that's it, that's the case, what should they be doing? What should they be doing uh, to do or to achieve it? Well, I'll tell you what we are doing. They, every day when we practice, they get there a lot of time in the nets as well. They get there a lot of time with the batting coaches. So that's what we are doing, and that's what they need to do. Good. As the friend of uh, your sideline as a test match uh, bowler, he has not uh, played an ODI for quite a while, uh, and he featured in Sunday's game when he came for replacement as uh, for Dushman Tamim. I mean, how well uh, you think uh, he turned up uh, for the game, and uh, especially the short balls, uh, testing the batsman out, and uh, is he going to be sort of uh, in your future plans for limited door games as well, uh, moving forward? Well, I think he certainly put his best foot forward, didn't he, in the last game. I think the way he turned up uh, on short notice, uh, and the way he performed with that ball in hand was, was fantastic. Uh, I think the skills that he's got, or what he showed us during the test match, lend themselves very well to one day cricket as well. You know, the way that he can hit length hard time and time and time again. The lines that he bowls are very tight and he's got a very accurate bouncer. So for me we need to keep pushing him on I and mean, keep working on his slower ball so he has that variation in there. But I think the basic skill set that you need to be successful in white ball cricket, 50 over white ball cricket, he certainly showed he got that in the last game. Two more questions? Uh, yeah. One then. A word on uh, Patum Niswanka and uh, Charita Palanka Masalanka. Patum to start with, I mean, not many people would have picked uh, him uh, to become the first Sri Lankan to score a double under. Uh, but he uh, managed that on Friday and then Charita Masalanka. Matt Winning effort uh, in the second game is uh, made a bit of it uh, in recent uh, months. Uh, Patum Niswanka, oh, listen, he. He's been threatening to do something big for a while now. Um, I think he's been a, a quiet, consistent performer at the top of the order for us, and has you know, gone about making that position his own. And I think he got the right conditions there um, to go out and show us what he can do. Um, and I think we all witnessed something very special in that knock. Um, and I think for him to do it on his 50th game, I believe it was as well. I mean, what a way to celebrate your 50th ODI cap by scoring the high score for it versus Sri Lankan as well. So, I know we in the dressing room certainly enjoyed it. We certainly celebrated with it afterward for him and made a fuss of him, which he deserved. Um, but we have, we've seen, he's, he's been coming more and more consistent for us. And Charity, if you mentioned as well, he's been Mr. Consistent, obviously coming at number five. So what we are finding now is the, the batting lineup are all starting to spare places and the pieces are sort of falling into place now. So we have to keep encouraging them to go out and score runs because ultimately that's what the, the name of the game is. Okay. Uh, due to the recent days, uh, both Husserl and Charita Salanka uh, pointed out the importance of playing on good serves with very players. So is it going to be the uh, is there going to be a change of Sri Lankan approach in the next uh, uh, recent future? Like we uh, used to play on so well low turners, uh, but uh, is it going to be a change of Sri Lankan approach in the, the coming matches? I mean, not only in the T20, but in the future as well. Well, if we just look at 50 over cricket for the moment, uh, I think our game plan is better suited to good wickets. The game plan that we're trying to play by works best on good wickets. Uh, so that's why we have got, I asked for flat wickets. Um, I mean, thankfully I got the support in that uh, from the, the powers that be, but I think for how we want to play our cricket, uh, the nature in which we want to play it, then we need good wickets to do that. And also allow the players the opportunity to, I mean, to, galvanise that game plan through the fact that they can go out and do it time and time again. Uh, and slow, low wickets at times don't suit us to do that. So for me, the wickets have been excellent here. Yes, we've seen lots of runs, but that's what we, that's what we want really. We need to be able to post those big scores, and then we need to be able to defend them. Karan Kapuane, Karan Piat Light Tienanam Tatin Hill Green Electric Rechargeable LED Bulb Motoragana, Vitul Baleno Metu by Hatra Pura Delvene, Wasrek Wagaki Maksaita Eka Mobile Bear, Green Electric, Ratam Eliai Prometheani Hillai.